Hello and welcome to this session on the training about Plaxis Automation Basics, in which we will give a quick look at Python 3, which can be used in automating Plaxis programs. In this session, we will have a quick introduction to Python 3, check what are the variables and basic data types available, learn how to import modules considering the large number of available options, understand what lists are and how Plaxis uses them, see the more common flow control statements in Python, check a few examples on functions and how we can use them, and wrap up with a quick view on the things we have not managed to cover. Let's see Python as a programming language. Python is an object oriented language in which everything is considered to be an object. It is free and open source. It has indentation-based structure using white spaces. It is case-sensitive, unlike the Plaxis command line. It has a large number of modules available, such as the NumPy, Matplotlib, EasyGUI, etc. It is strongly typed. For example, you cannot say 5 plus blah, and it is implicitly typed, which means you do not have to pre-declare variable types. In this session forward, Python 3 will be covered. Let's see a few examples on how Python has helped us automate some processes with Plaxis. Here, you can see the implementation of a simple slider for generating a 2D model. This was done as a web-based tool in which you can interactively change the sliders and generate a new model. Calculate and view the total displacements each time. This case shows how it is possible to create a combi plot for the structural forces of any plate in your model. For example, having implemented this script, it is possible to run it via Python run Python script or Python run Python tool. In its original form, the 2D to 3D converted started as a simple Python code and it grew to be an automated Python script, available for everyone using Plaxis 2D and Plaxis 3D. Alright, let's start with some programming terminology. When we mention a type, we mean the classification of data. For instance, that can be an integer, whole numbers, a floating point, numbers with decimals, a string, simple text, or a boolean, true or false. When we mention a variable, we mean a name associated with some data. Note that this is not the same as in mathematics. It may have long names, it can change meaning, and it does not have to necessarily be used in a formula. Lastly, the assignments. By that, we mean setting a value to a variable. The following assignment is better read as 5 is assigned to the variable x. The second line is not a mathematical formula, and that is why with Python this has a meaning. It can be read as x plus 1, whatever value x has, is once again assigned to the variable x. This means that the value of the x variable will be 6 if and when we choose to print it. Let's get started with the first part of the Python introduction, and that is to understand variables and numbers. In the example A, I will be using the Python interpreter provided with Plaxis. I remind you that this is under Expert Python Interpreter menu option. First, I'm assigning the value 5 to a variable I call i. I do the same for the 3.14 to f. Naturally, if I write i plus f, this will give me 8.14. Moving to example B. You can see how I can assign multiple variables in one line. X min is set to 0, Y min also to 0, X max is 18, and Y max is set to 10. Someone will already remember that these are the first settings in Plaxis project properties. Having assigned these variables to a specific value, I can now run a command in Plaxis via Python to set up the sole contour in my model. Let's move to strings. In Python, a string is anything that is included between quotation marks, single or double. In this case, the text, my first project with Python, is assigned to the variable I call title. Strings can be queried by index, and for that I need to use square brackets and an integer. 
So for instance, the following print statement would take the whole string each time and return the item that corresponds to that index. That is why title 0 returns the first item, letter M, and why title 1 returns the second item, letter Y, and so on. Remember that zero-based counting is in programming. Strings are encountered very often in Pluxis, and the first time you will see it is when defining the project properties as shown in this slide. Using our knowledge on multiple assignments, I am bringing the slicing of strings too. Slicing means that from the whole contents of a variable, here a string, I can slice it up and keep the part that I want. For example, here I define two variables, head and tail. The head will have the value of the string that is sliced from the beginning of the string up to the third item. Remember again, zero-based counting. The tail will have the value of the string that starts from the 18th item and it will stop at the end of the string. That is why if I print the values of header and tail, Python will reply with my with Python. Boolean type is quite straightforward. It is an object or property being true or false. In Pluxis, as shown in example A, it can be found when you activate the apply strength reduction property of a soil of a polygon in structures mode. In example B, you can see the same setting but now in stage construction. Notice that the face, which is required here, is placed in square brackets right after the property. Importing modules will become an important part of automation, especially given the myriads of modules available online for almost every need. Python delivers the basic module for mathematics. You need to write the word import followed by the name of the module. Here, in example A, you can see that I have written import math. To access the full contents of a module, you can run the dir function as shown here. The help function usually contains some additional information. In example B, you can see how you can import specific functions of a module to avoid unnecessary importing of data. From math import tan, comma, p will only import these two functions from the math module. In example C, you see the first line of the boilerplate we use in Plaxis. That is needed because we need to import the Plaxis scripting library. In this case, the module we import is plxscripting.easy and we want to import everything, which is why we use the asterisk. A Python list is a powerful tool in programming. Let's see some examples to better understand them. In example A, we define a variable f and assign the value 3.14. Then we define a new variable values and assign a list that contains three items. Note the square bracket notation indicating that this object is a list. When we print the values list, we can see the contents of the list. The contents can be anything, like in this case, in which we have some integers and a variable f. In example b, we create a new list called chords, which contains two numbers. This list can be used in Pluxis to create the simplest geometric entity, a point. See here that I'm using the index of the list to pass the parameter of the first coordinate and the second coordinate to the point command. In example C, we see a case in which Python allows us to unwrap the contents of the whole list one after the other. For this, you can use the asterisk as indicated in this slide. A list can contain any other Python type, even another list as shown in the last example at the bottom of this slide. Continuing on the lists, here are some useful features. You can ask for the size of the list with a len function. You can append items to a list with the append method. You can directly assign by using the indexing, for instance, coords square bracket minus one, assigned to 200. It is possible to perform slicing to a list. For example, some coords assigned to coords square bracket one column this will create a new list starting from the second item until the end of the chords list. You can easily create a shallow copy by not specifying anything at all at the start or at the end to the slicing as shown in this slide. 
you can delete a value by using the following del chords square bracket 1 with 1 being the index of that list. Of course, there are much more lists can do that we can cover in this session. Let's now move to the flow control statements of our Python scripts. The first we will see is the if statement. Let's check an example to better understand it. We define two variables, x and y, to 10 and 20 respectively. Then we start with if x is exactly 10, that is the double equal sign, followed by colon sign. Notice now that we have to add four spaces for indentation to indicate the part of the code that belongs under the if statement. The command used here is to print some text. This code will print is 10 only when the condition of the if statement is satisfied. Then we add another if statement in case x is not equal to 5. This will print another text. This will also print is not 5 as the condition of the second if statement is also satisfied. Moving to another case, you can see here the use of the if statement with alternative checks. We start with a combo condition to be checked in the first if statement. If that is satisfied, something will be printed. In this case, this will not print anything. Then we use the elif to pass our first alternative. Following the if statement that was not satisfied, this will be checked. In this case, this will also not print anything. Finally, if nothing is covered with the if or the elif statements, the else can handle the rest. In this case, none of the above conditions were met, so the else will come and print at the end. Note that you can also use the end or the or with capital letters to pass multiple conditions as shown in the last lines of the code in this slide. Time for a Plaxis example. We define a list named chords. We define two points using the items of this list. We define a new variable called delta, calculating the difference between the x coordinate of the two points. We define a new variable called tolerance and assign the value 0.5. We add an if statement to check the absolute difference with tolerance. If that is satisfied, we first print some text and then the snap command is run to perform a geometry correction in Plaxis. Else, we print a different text to indicate what happened. In all cases, notice the four indentation spaces added, which is used as a generic suggestion when coding in Python. Another flow control option is the for loop. Let's see directly an example. In example A, we define a list. With the for loop, we can iterate in the contents of this list and print them in order. In example B, we see a Plaxis example. We have defined a set of coordinates in a list. We first iterate in this list to create points each time accessing the first list items. Notice that here the first item of the list is the 0, 0.4 and not just the first item you read being the zero number. That is because I have written the numbers within a parenthesis. This indicates I'm using a different Python data type, which is called tuple. So my list is a list of tuples that contain numbers. Another way to use the for loop is to print properties of a listable. For instance, why not printing the name and the coordinates of all points available in my model? Finally, a for loop can be used in combination with the range function. This allows for the for loop to be run exactly two times, stopping when the index reaches at two. In this case, the first time the for loop runs, it will print gi.points0.x and gi.points0.y. The second time it will run for the points one and then it will stop. Iteration with number two is not run. After writing your first lines of code, you'll start repeating code. Naturally, Python as a programming language is efficient enough to not want you to repeat the same line of code. For those cases and many others, the functions can be used. In this example, you see that to define a function, we start with the word def. Then we follow it with the name of our function. And then with a parenthesis that should include any parameters to be used in our function. We finish the first line by adding a colon. Inside the function, four spaces of indentation are required, and then we can add our code. Here, 
we want to print whatever this parameter is. To call our function, we just write the name and in the parentheses we add the parameter here, the strings Alice and Bob. As you would expect, this will first run and print Alice and then it will print Bob. Easy, right? Let's see a Plaxis example now. In this slide, you will see the definition of a function whose purpose is to adjust the length of a plate by a specified depth. So I write the def followed by a clear name, no spaces are allowed, and finally the two parameters required. Here, these are the plate object itself and the extra depth for the lengthening. My code first needs to check the location of the bottom point of my plate, which is done by running another function named get underscore bottom underscore point. From Python, we know that we can use an if statement by providing just any data type with contents, thus always considering it being true. In this way, my if statement is satisfied to continue on the code below and call the move command in Plaxis and extend the plate bottom point by a specified depth. If this comes as false for some reason, then I choose to print a clear text message. To call the function, I write the name followed with the exact parameters within the parentheses. Let's have some fun with list comprehensions. In this example, we will see why the list comprehensions can help us write some nice code and quick code for performing tasks on a single line. We will generate a list with the numbers from 0 to 9 using the range function that we learned today. Then, we create an empty list called doubles. We use a for loop to fill this list in with the doubles from the numbers list. Notice that for defining the doubles and appending the doubles as values, I need three lines of code. With the list comprehension, I only need one line, as shown in the last line of code here. To better understand it, I will highlight each step of the definition of the list comprehension. When we are initializing the list, we use the square brackets. We do the same for the list comprehension too. Then we have the main action of the code, which is to append to the list. This is important and it is placed first in the list comprehension. That makes it clear on what this list comprehension does. Following that, we add the for loop exactly as written before without the column. And that's it. The list comprehension can be useful, especially in shortening the code quite a lot. And with that, we have reached the end of this introduction to Python. There are many items we have not had the time to cover in this session. We did not cover tuples, sets or dictionaries, which can be very useful in scripting. We did not see the while loop or understand how to handle exceptions. We did not manage to cover functions with list and or keyword parameters with dog strings. Or functional features other than list comprehensions. We could not cover classes in general object structures. Finally, we have not checked meta classes and the Python starter library. For more, you are advised to check online for resources on Python training and fora that can help you with learning the basics and advanced Python programming.